Welcome back, everybody. A uh, bit of a break there between our series as uh, a few things happening in the mix of stuff. But we have game number one in the rest of three between Kingwin and Fnatic Lacoste. This one, hopefully, will go the distance because we've had two quick 2-0s so far in our series. And we haven't really had much substance or meat to talk about. Yeah, all four games were pretty much uh, one-sided. Not, not too much to talk about. Uh, Anti-climatic -clim endings yep. in pretty much all of four games. They, they were done even before the fight started. There was no big clashes. Uh, th this, ga this game might be more close, especially since uh, Kingwin is playing uh, in their hometown. I think they want to prove something. Uh, they beat Nubi yesterday 1-0 with uh, kind of a cheesy strat. Uh, Nature's Prophet uh, was all over the place. He destroyed his lane uh, against the Brewmaster, and uh, it, it felt Ten like a newbie couldn't remaining. even do anything. Yeah, uh, okay. in, in the best of one, that kind of stuff works. Five and I guess remaining. maybe more so against, uh, you know, a newbie, you know, uh, kind of thinking about the drafting style, preparing for them, you know, your analyst obviously creating documents upon documents of printouts and information about their drafting, their movement, their ward patterns, everything. Fnatic, yeah, but, can, um, you, can you do the same thing for them? Because they, they've always been known with EE to be, you know, kind of crazy. He's a hard uh, guy to guess what he's going to do, what he's going to build, what they're going to play. Uh, so I don't think that works. Also, uh, having all these um, analysts, statsmen, whatever you want to call them, uh, it's all good if you know how to use the info. But yeah. if you don't, uh, I mean, Dota is a game of, uh, of uh, knowledge, skill and uh, reactions. It, it it doesn't matter. Someone sometimes pick up Invis Rune, the double damage, which changes things a lot. Uh, uh, some RNG kicks in. Uh, also, reaction time. If you didn't uh, pop a BKB, or if he did, you would win a fight, which would lead to Roche and stuff like that. It's it's super complicated. That's that's why the some of the stats really don't matter. Omni Knight does matter though. Picking it into Razor as well. Interesting decision from Kingwin. That's, that's a very conscious, you have Razor, we're still going to pick Omni into this. Does that uh, tell you anything? The Kingwin have balls of steel? Ten Could be, or they might uh, think it's uh, that they have a way to counter it. Um, when we talk about Razor and Omni Knight, uh, we always get to that, like, one cancels the other, one is a good against the other, and that uh, they work well together. We don't even say why, because everyone pretty much knows why. Razor... Uh, Always wants to lane against Omni Knight, uh, just runs at him, uh, steals the damage, plus one stun, Radiant disable, whatever for Omni Knight, and that's a that's a dead Omni. Plus uh, he has a dis naturally build a dispel, which removes Guardian Angel. That's always very nice. Fnatic snap out the Bane, something that Kingwin love running the Rubik Bane combo, Elder Sash Bane and Cancer on the Rubik. Gives them a little more room to maneuver with the money flowing into the pockets of the Rubik, but the Fnatic do grab that away. And obviously, you know, a great combo with a Razor with Nightmare into Link. You can get Ten a lot of damage that way. Remaining. Stop Omni Knight from dragging creep waves around with that Nightmare as well. So a good all-round pick seconds, in that first phase, it feels, from Fnatic. And Kingwin still need to show us the way with this Omni Knight and how it's going to work. But second phase bans. Beastmaster Radiant removed, the TB to follow. And what do you expect coming out here? What else is going to be hotly contested? You, know, you mentioned the DK earlier on. Yeah, DK and uh, probably probably Gyro as well. DK is one of the heroes that uh, what uh, it looks like he's not uh, losing any games. Even uh, in the previous game, who, who was playing OG against uh, Mineski. against Mineski, they, DK won again. I, I would love to see some stats. I'll 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 check later to see if actually every, every time I saw a Dragon Knight uh, this tournament, he actually won a game. Does seem very strong. And Gyro first phase banned, so can't be picked up at all here. But against against Kingwin, you do kind of have to worry. You know, you're talking about the DK potentially for Nisha, uh, Exotic Deer. There's still the Lone Druid out there that maybe is going to be a worry for you. I don't think it's the best uh, best hero to play against the Razor and Bane stealing all That's the true. damage from from the bear. It just doesn't feel right. Very true. And Kingwin could even go back for you know like one of their one of their classics, the Medusa, the PL as one of their options. Razor and Bane don't offer you anything against those illusion heroes like Phantom Lancer Radiant and banning out the TB into the Nature's the Prophet ban, but Kingwin instantly they can't get the Bane, so they get the Witch Doctor instead. 
That is some serious respect there from Eternal Envy, banning out the Nature's Prophet, right? Probably Adam, 343, tapping him on the shoulder, saying, hey, right. you, you should probably forget. ban it. Uh... Don't forget about that Furion. I wonder who's going to play uh, a position uh, four slash five. Uh, probably five European teams uh, prefer to give a uh, farm to Rubik instead of Witch Doctor, but yeah. uh, that, that could change. Like, R Witch Doctor with Spirit Vessel and Maledict deals a ton of damage, and some teams love to run it. L LGD loves to run it, FY. To be uh, specific, um, I'm surprised Three I didn't see any Tide Hunter so far. Dusk. It's either kind of banned out second phase or ignored from what we've seen. Has been has been out of sorts in the drafts recently. Fnatic now with the Tusk. I love this intense music, not some elevator music. Ten this is Dota music, remaining. if you don't know, boys. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, the violins. Five also, they need some tower damage on the side of Kingwin if they want to run uh, a DP. Might not be the the worst. Or maybe, maybe Queen of Pain is also a good pick against the Tusk, not really affected by shards uh, nor uh, Snowball against the Razor Static Link as well. Yeah, some kind of hero that can utilize the repel as well, right? You know, the DK, the Queen of Pain, just up on the front lines, hitting buildings, have that repel on from them and some kind of save from, from the Omni in behind them. But there is the PL. Fury being banned allows that hero to go through the pool. And King Gwent. With their mid and safe lane still open, Fnatic have got a lot of questions to answer. They, they need some AoE clear against uh, PL Razor provides Ten some, especially if he builds remaining. into in, into Shiva's guard at one point. Uh, Sven is still in the Five pool. That, that's the remaining. first hero that always comes to my mind against the, the Phantom Lancer. Plus they have really good uh, disables on the side of Fnatic. Grip, uh, Tusk. A lot of save, a lot of initiation tool. And then on the flip side, Kingwin don't have that much of that. Cask and Telekinesis is the main disables. Yeah, I'm looking at Enigma here for Universe as a potential huge pick for Fnatic. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about the Enigma against Rubik. It can work, but Radiant then you need to catch back. Rubik. Yeah, there's the Tide Hunter. Uh, but this pick provides them a lot of team fight potential. Uh, if I was Team Kingwin, uh, I would probably ban out uh, the DP right now. Like with, with the DP, Tide Hunter, Razor, it's impossible to team fight Ten against. I, uh, especially with the uh, uh, Rubik and Witch Doctor as uh, as uh, these squishy supports. Especially if Fnatic are the ones to like set up around a tower or an objective, yeah. right? They can put themselves in really good positions to be able to counter initiate with all they've got. Tide Hunter, one of uh, the better heroes uh, to have against him, is uh, is a Witch Doctor because of the Maledict. Uh, Kraken Shell doesn't work against it. It's good in the laning stage, uh, but after it kind of kind of falls off because Tide Hunter naturally builds into pipe. Well, a, a big OD ban there. Very good against the Tide, decent against the Razor, and with the Astral up against you know, Bane and Tusk. Has that saving mechanism potentially to come out? They they still could be thinking about uh, getting a remaining. DK, but then their lanes are are, are strong, especially uh, uh, sorry, they're they're not remaining. strong because they have PL and the uh, and the DK for for Kingwin uh, against Tide Hunter two melee uh, cores. Could Fnatic go for DK themselves? Uh, they can definitely yes. It, it it, it's a splash. It's a splash against the uh, PL, yeah. and they have no burst whatsoever to take him down. Either DP or or Dragonite would be perfect pick for Fnatic. Unkillable tanky monsters up at the front. So if it is a DP or a DK coming out from Fnatic potentially, Kingwin to deal with one of those. Oh no! Oh, what is that? Oh, oh. New hero? And a Zeus? <coughs> All right, we're in for a treat, boys. Hello. Nisha, could you just pinch me a second? Am I, <laughs> <laughs> am I still? Am I still oh, here? not there. Take your pants up, Gary. Okay, baby. Uh, <laughs> what do we have? Nisha, Zeus. So that's uh, mid Zeus offline Omni Knight uh, exotic there on Phantom Lancer against. Uh, I'm not sure about this uh, Zeus pick. They they have zero zero control for Abed's Ember Spirit. And it uh, gives. I, I was uh, thinking about uh, counters uh, to Phantom Lancer because at uh, one point before people started to, to build Battle Fury, it felt like uh, his uh, 
really hard to counter. There's not too many ways to counter. And uh, Ember Spirit is one of the heroes that is forgotten and uh, has uh, built in a true strike at one point. Uh, and uh, if you build into a Battle Fury, you have more than enough with Slide of Fist to deal with all these illusions. It's just an extra gold for him. Absolutely. We'll see how it all pans out, though. I'm excited, definitely, to see this Abed Ember as well as this Nisha Zeus. Zeus, a hero that we see very rarely outside of like Zeus ET Bloodseeker combos, you know, back in the day. Or Zeus against Tinker more recently with that Nimbus from his Aghanims being incredibly powerful. But Nisha, the Zeus against the Ember lane, something that, you know, has come about occasionally from time to time. It has happened over the past couple of years. And with that <laughs> chain lightning, you're able, to, or even just a lightning bolt, you're able to pop off the flame guard very early on. And that's a lot of the damage. They're going to find Rubik. That will be removed. You're right, they will. Shards there, but the lift back. Perfect. Katzor gets himself a nice bit of distance away with that incredibly well-timed and placed telekinesis. And King Gwent will defend their jungle for now against these hordes of fanatic heroes. On a bigger scale, Team King Gwent's lineup uh, feels uh, really weak to me. They, they have uh, no burst whatsoever besides Zeus, and uh, these two supports uh, have no escape mechanism, neither does Zeus. So you have three heroes if you run at them, especially with uh, heroes like Ember Spirit, Razor, the Tusk, they, they have nothing to, uh, to deal with. And uh, they have zero tower damage besides uh, Phantom Lancer, which is not a super reliable tower damage. Well, maybe a pre-made draft here that they've got some idea to do. You know, they were scrimming just before this game. Perhaps something they were practicing up as Eternal Envy. He'll be able to link up here with Patos and drain a lot of this damage with Bane arriving also. No Nightmare or Brain Sap leveled up just yet. We'll force Patos away from the lane. He did get a good Observer Ward down, though, blocking up the camp. Also scouting out for the rotations of Bane. So we've got the 1v2 top lane where Omni Knight is... He's done for, right? This is this is not a lane that you like to come to. It's going to take some serious mind gaming and outplaying for, from Patos to like hide in the trees, juke away, to get out of the range of this nightmare static link or his brain sap static link. In he fact, more the, damage. He kills the range creep, uh, trying to push the wave so he gets uh, more creep, uh, creep equilibrium and uh, have to. Okay, he's just going to run away because he knows uh, Bane has uh, brain sap. He's just going to pull the creeps. That nice play by Patos there. Yeah, uh, bottom lane was uh, blocked by Tusk Shards. Uh, Tidehunter really not, not a hero that you can just throw in one versus three scenario and uh, expect him to have any items. Especially not a level one. Very difficult for him. Denied. We'll put a bit of pressure here onto Exotic Deer as well. DJ just trying to get as many denies in there with the help of Tide as possible, but... Elisash starts things off. Katsor not quite in reach there, even with the brown boots to get in on top of DJ. For now, they'll get their wave pushing a little bit closer to that tier one. Uh, as over towards top lane, Pylai died. There's a TP coming in here. Katsor ready to fight Patos with the purification. And now Pylai dies in far too deep. He has a TP scroll, trying to get in to the darkness here, fogging through the trees. But Katsor holding the telekinesis, knowing that even, oh, I don't know if that was even required, but they'll get the kill regardless. He just wants the, to get the last hit because it will help him a lot more. Rubik uh, already has boots with the boots of speed. He can actually run away from Static Link. Uh, mid lane, uh, Nisha brought uh, two extra mangoes. Mango, mango is one of the highest value items right now besides, uh, besides Clarity, the yeah. cheap ones, plus and Magic Wand, of course. It's very big. Holding onto a point as well for that lightning bolt, but uh, you can see Abed, he's just not leveling anything up. He knows that if he pops Flame Guard, it's going to be instantly taken down. Now it's level 2, takes a little more damage, 200 from the 50. It's a nice bit of scaling there for the Flame Guard, so it'll take more than just one Arc Lightning to deal with it. A pile I die. Harassing back Nisha for now, but top lane, Eternal Envy is being shoved out of his lane. 59 stolen damage away from Katzor's Rubik there, it looks like. But bottom, there's some aggression. Elisash trapped in the shards. And they'll snowball forward as well with the final punches in. Elisash gets the Maledict down, but no real follow-through. While mid, Nisha, oh, 20 HP. TP from Katzor is here. Abed dropping low to the tower. But Fade Bolt Telekinesis unable to find the kill on him. But he will find potentially a kill here oh, onto the Bane. The Brain nice Sap juke. not quite working out. Used one Mango to get the mana and uh, get a kill on Bane. Die, die, die in a bad position there. 
Yeah. Zeus with a bottle. A bed. Oh, he actually used the flask already. And now he's burning through tangos like nobody's business. But yeah, this is the Zeus lane. 15-3, farming nicely, trading out with Abed, who is doing a decent job there with his Quelling Blade. And now the brown boots up. Make sure he doesn't get zapped too Utterly often. Radiant are scanning. Scanning onto DJ. Kinquin, know that he's missing. Universe has been left fully alone, and that signals now to Ellis Ash. Play aggressively, the Tusk isn't here. And DJ, I think, knows that they know that they know that they know because he's pinging out onto Universe saying, hey, do, don't stand too far forward. Zeus isn't showing mid. There's no opportunity here for us. Four-minute runes are coming. Let's just secure those instead. Yeah, DJ with the defensive will, Tusk with Stout Shield, not what you see usually, but they just wanted to lane together to get the most out of it. Uh, and uh, even Universe on level 3 got one level in Gush, so they can actually kill. If they want to kill someone, it's going to be a Witch Doctor. Yeah, most likely, yeah. So Pathos in this lane, which started off as oh. Razor Bane. Bottom lane, he already used the cask. It's time to go now. Absolutely, and they go. DJ does get whacked by the Maledicts, but his Snowball will delay things out for El Sash to turn back. And they're still yet to kill him off. Universe can't finish the Witch Doctor, and DJ's actually in trouble here. Pops his stick. One more pop of the Maledict will not finish him as the salve does come out, but a lift back. Capsule has made the rotation charges. forward. There are the charges of the stick. Exotic Deer has another Lance in five seconds, but the turn back on back on back. DJ, he wants to kill off the Witch Doctor now. Snowball ready. Doesn't he have the damage to finish him, though. There's Elisash taunting under the tower, saying, hey, no, come on, come on, finish me off, yeah. Snowball back to the creeps, and DJ will be safe. Good back and forth there, really nice to see between the two squads. But it's not done. DJ dragged back again. Telekinesis into Maledict. Capsule will fall the cask, though. Bouncing out. Ella Sash gets slammed down by the anchor smash down. Exotic Deer, with no mana remaining, has to just keep on farming. While mid lane, Pylai Dai and Abed pair up to kill off the Zeus. Fnatic coming out on top across those two lanes. Yeah, Patas is going to need to use his TP to save people, especially when they decide to dive uh, Zeus. Once. Uh, Ember Spirit gets to level 6, that's going to be a free kill uh, on Azus, especially if someone rotates. Abed forced to pop the wand. Nisha with a ton of damage behind him. 2-3-0 is his build. Dire Courier with a bottle on it there for Abed. We'll swing over, take a bit of damage from something, but looks like it is fine for now. Eternal Envy. Yeah, he goes for the link after the lift. Katzor in a spot of bother here. One more hit would have done the trick, but... Pilot die can't get there fast enough. Has to nightmare up the Omni, steal up the bounty runes, and walk away. Body blocks. DJ, but he doesn't have uh, Orb of Venom yep. because he went for that uh, defensive build. And yeah, they can't really kill him. More if mm, if he gets the lift plus Zeus ulti. No, never mind. Not happening. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Tide Hunter is so farmed. What is he sitting at? 25 CS. Even though Phantom Lancer is uh, free farming, still Tidehunter almost level 6. Mana Boots, Magic Wand. Sitting very pretty. Patos forced to run back away, but Abed level 6 now with these TP Yeah, now scrolls. they're just gonna use the Remnants and go on him. Yeah, regens all the way back up in Fountain. Remnants back to lane. They're pinging Nisha out here. With the Bane, Nightmare moving forward, Brain Sap to start things off, there's the Remnant in, but Abed, half HP, a little bit worried about how things are progressing here, Pilot Eye zapped back by Nisha as well. And it will just oh. be a disengage as Pathos top nearly dropping there to Eternal Envy, but I guess if you look at the other way around, Eternal Envy maybe nearly dropping there to Pathos while down a bottom lane, DJ and Universe. Getting on top of the Rubik and the PL, Doppelganger is here and ready though as he moves himself up the ramp. Shrine is ready. Staircase. Not working well here for Fnatic as that's a two-man maledict with the cast. Now Pylai die going into battle here. Zeus ulti will be popped. Abed will run forward. Two-man searing chain snowball shards. In onto Katzor as well, but DJ Universe will not die. The maledict pops over, but they've been kept alive. One for nothing. Fnatic again just getting that little in and out. Find the one pick off and then get the hell away. As, as time progresses, it's going to be a real problem for Kingwin because they have no any kind of lockdown for, for this Ember Spirit. This is a free Ember game. He, he will be able to do whatever he wants Dyer's if he does not overextend. 
Uh, also, when Tidehunter gets level 6, they can also pressure PL again. If they had the Ravage right there, they could have gotten at least two kills. PL heading into the Battle Fury build. Looks like he's going to aim to try and keep up with the farm of Abed. As well as this Eternal Envy Razor, who has been doing a good job up at top lane. Phase Boots Aquila, aim for the drums as well. I'm pretty standard though. Uh, Eternal Envy up against the Omni Knight. Maybe, maybe not doing as well as we we made it out to be. You know, Patos as well as oh, Katsu. Bottom lane, they, that's... They played uh, that really nicely, yeah. yeah like level universe. 2, Maledict. Uh, another lands coming soon. Nice night, As a Ravage. Save there from Pylodai from one of the ticks. And Universe will walk it all off. But I think Kinguin have played very well in the top lane to give Patos what he's got, but also to stop Eternal Envy just kind of steamrolling that lane. But it also means that, as we've seen, they've kind of missed out a little bit in the mid, where Zeus has been ganked up, but also the PL, you know, okay, it's top of net worth, 4k, but it's not been easy, it's been a struggle there with the supports to and try I, and deal with them. Yeah, they just scanned out the the smoke coming out from DJ and the pile I die, because no one was showing on the bottom lane since the universe was low HP. He had the smoke as well, not, he can't show, otherwise they would just kill him. Mm, top lane. A drain there will take 52 damage away from the Omni and into the hands of Eternal Envy. Running in, try and catch the Rubik. He's got a lot of damage. The quick TP, Patos purifies up. Eternal Envy unable to finish the job on any of those heroes as Nisha walks into Pylai Die. He'd been waiting for him. Remnant up, DD Rune, Abed here with the Searing Chains. Nisha will lose his life. Still though, Zeus is... One of those really weird heroes who, you know, was always like an early game hero, right? It's like, yeah. get your ulti, zap people down. Now he has some serious ups and downs through the game, right? Once Aiming towards the Ags. Yeah, once again we see uh, a team that does not have any kind of initiation tool and not nothing to deal with Ember Spirit. Like, uh, the only way to start a fight is for, for you actually waiting for them uh, to come at you, and that, that's it. Ravage used on bottom. Oh, they're catching PL. Searing chains from Abed. A bit of RNG there, perhaps. Catching exotic deer. Oh. There we go. <laughs> the Sentinel Stomp. They know. Not a real one about will fall. RNG. <laughs> yeah. Also, th this PL is gonna need a lot of time, especially with the build that uh, he wants to go for, so he can pair up with uh, Razor and uh, and Ember Spirit. And Ember now, 600 away from Boots of Travel with you know, Aquila, Wand, Bottle, everything. Already up. Radiance top tower Looking very top. strong so far for Abed. What, what do you think his talents are going to be? I mean, we, we, we don't know what kind of build he's going, right? You mentioned the Battle Fury build earlier on against the PL. But it's equally, you know, a potential here for him to still go for some kind of magic damage build with, you know, Maelstrom, for instance. Or the yeah, Radiance, that, even. Yeah, that can... Both of them can work, also three of them, sorry. Um, on level 10 he might actually get the Flame Guard Absorption, because uh, Zeus removes it with the Bolt, uh, and he wants to have it so he can actually deal the damage and uh, against Maledict as well. No, well, for now, Kinguin just trying to carve themselves yeah, a few areas here to farm. Zeus zapping down potential ward spots, exotic deer. As Elder Sash in front of him, warding up as well as Katsua holds the line on top lane. Being forced away from that southeastern side of the map all the way to the northwest. <laughs> Abed. Abed wants to. Wow, oh, he, he wanted to block the creep spawn. Or not. He actually wants to farm it, but uh, Patos is near. <laughs> Can't really do it. Wow, that's some ballsy farming. Oh, Omni. Steal some. Purify. Steal all. Very, very well done. Snipes them all out. Our bottom lane, though, shoved all the way into the tier one. Radiant Eternal Envy. Full Hood of Defiance. Doesn't finish off the drums with the wind lace, but yeah, look instead at, look tanking at up so much. Look at him moving, tanking the Radiant damage so Siege Creep doesn't time. die. Skilled. Uh, he might be in trouble now, though. Katzo, if he can get vision, will lift him up. Razor dragged into Patos with the purification, but DJ and Abed both readily available to turn this one back around. A good Malekt in from Ella Sash, but he's still yet to hit level 6. There's no Death Ward and there's no nuke damage, like you pointed out. They don't have the catch or the kill power just yet. Exotic Deer saying sorry there, but not even sure there's anything he could have done. Yeah, this uh, this lineup, uh, I don't know what, what it takes for them to actually win a fight unless Fnatic overextends, but uh, they're not going to do it. Tidehunter, uh, when he finishes Radiant's the pipe, like, Team Kingwin is not going to deal any kind of damage. 
Oh, the grip onto Zeus as well. This is going from bad to worse. Abed on this Ember Spirit. With the help of Pylai die so very swiftly, killing off the Zeus again. 0-3-1 for Nisha. Now starting to kind of talk about how the hero should be able to you know, progress through this early game. Look towards the Ethel Ends, the Blink, Yules, a kind of mobility item here or there. And then the Aghanim Scepter comes out, which makes him a completely different beast to handle. But getting to that point, getting to like 35, 40 minutes here with the Zeus, when your PL is also trying to aim for that mid to late game of the Battle Fury, and your other heroes don't have any kind of pushing power. They don't have a way to force Fnatic into these, you know, group up and deal with us. King would have to go out and hunt, or they become the hunted. Eternal Envy with the help of DJ. Snowball over the shards. Nicely done with a punch up. They know which one's real. At least they should do. An exotic deer. With the help of Pathos and Ella Sash, try and swing us back on Eternal Envy. Exotic deer still alive. There's the Zeus ulti, but Abed kills off Nisha up at top lane while EE and DJ just run away. And this could easily be a, a 20 minute. Uh, game. They have no comeback potential with their heroes. Uh, uh, they're gonna start falling off, especially Witch Doctor, who's only level 5 now. Uh, Zeus, he doesn't have uh, that much farm, has mana boots, so he's gonna have Aether Lens level 9. Uh, meanwhile, you have heroes who scale really well inside of Fnatic, and uh, they have a lot of tower damage, a lot of control. I can see you looking at Abad as well. Radiance queued up. That's what he's looking towards, so that will be the option for him against this PL. For now, anyway. Patos, one-man shrine, always feels bad when you're forced into that situation. Closing in on drums. Middle tower is under attack. Everything feels delayed here for Kingwin. Steal out. Katsor gets the level 4 brain sap, so that's a nice bit of nuke damage. That'll do the trick if they're able to find someone to try and pick off. Doppelganger up onto the high ground does find Abed, but with a slight and a potential remnant back away. He does have one over in his jungle side here, near the shrine. He is always perfectly safe. There is, there is no way to catch him, like, you, like you've been saying. It's a free game for Abed. I don't know if someone needs to build... Uh, maybe Omni Knight can build... Uh, Road of Pathos. Oh, am I meant to clap? <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> I've, I've heard that one before, though, unfortunately. Yeah, but it, it, it's, <laughs> it's actually time maybe to build it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Catch the Ember. Kill Rising. the Ember. Well, Fnatic protecting the Ember. Three-man smoke Death in front of Abed. DJ Universe both moving forward. Who are they aiming for? Dire Scan looking for someone. Ella Sash, he'll be the one guy left all alone. Not invited to the and party. Abed not jumping done. forward. He wants more. There's Eternal Envy diving. Nisha searing chains from Abed. Catches the Zeus. Fnatic 13 to 3. Looking incredibly strong. They, they, they can't do anything on the side of Kingwin. Uh, they can't gank because they have uh, Rubik and Witch Doctor, which are, especially now, the, all the heroes on the side of Fnatic are beefy. If, if they can catch uh, maybe a Bane that's an empty kill, look, look at what uh, Pilot Die has queued up. He has the Guardian Greaves queued up. They just want to go in and end the game as soon as possible. Pipe is ready on a Tidehunter, uh, getting closer to a Blink Dagger. Like, look at the amount of farm on Pilot Die. Yeah, it's 1.6k gold, uh, 17 minutes in on Bane. I mean, what, what is he, six times the net worth of the Witch Doctor or something? <laughs> Five times it, maybe? Closing in on a thousand net worth there, Elisash, unfortunately down in the dumps. Has hit level six, he's got the Death Ward to play with. I don't know if he'll have a playground to actually go into. What are they doing with their items? Like, Razor has Yule Scepter queued up. What? Move speed! Move speed, uh, he's going... Uh, all in on memes. Yeah. Race car razor. Oh dear lord. We're looking at race car razor as Patos does fall flat on his face up towards the top. I'm, I'm starting to think now, back to the draft, you know, the Ember Spirit came out as the ninth pick from Fnatic and it was maybe, what, two seconds and Kingwin snapped the Zeus. No, it, it was after. They the Ember came after the Zeus? Yes. Okay. So it wasn't uh, unusual. I think so. It would be even worse if they if they <laughs> picked Zeus after PL. Well, Fnatic, like you said, looking to close out this game. Bottom lane. 
Abed just straight in onto Nisha again. Throws his ulti out, but the remnants bouncing around, and Nisha will be found again. Unstoppable Abed, 6 0 and 5. As they continue their domination in game number one. That's a full Reeves glimmer on Bane. Blink oh, yeah. dagger for Universe. Didn't go for the Greaves. Well, he's leaving an option, I guess, to, to a Tide Hunter to actually go for Greaves as well. <laughs> yeah, Universe, you buy this item. I don't want to. I want to have more fun. Haste. PL has uh, Battle Fury finished, level 12. 18 minutes in, not the, the best level. Uh, next, Shadow Blade. I don't know what, what he's going to build. I guess he wants to break the Tide Hunter at one point, which is going to be irrelevant. That's super hard for them, isn't it? I mean, Zeus is trying to buy a Blink Dagger. Aether Lens is there for that extended range, but I need some more damage, honestly. The high ground being pressured. And All three lanes being shoved in. Yeah, also one point, they can't kill the Sigil. That, that's the big problem. Like, the only right-click damage that they have is, uh, PL. is PL. Yeah. It really is a rough one. Pathos on the bottom lane. Ah, uh, well, a bad can't really fight him. That's one good thing. Omni runs at the Ember Spirit, and Ember finally has to run away. Cats or mid lane, though, in an awful lot of trouble. With another Snowball in, the Ellis Sash turn around with the Death Ward there. But the pipe from Universe will keep everyone super healthy. And the Glimmer from Pylai Die keeps DJ at uh, a nice little distance from the rest of these Radiant players. Razor actually went uh, for Yule Scepter build. <laughs> it feels like... So he static link Yules, drain all the damage, and then when they drop, he just one hits them, right? So he buys a Daedalus now, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Mask of Madness instead. Let's go. Envy. Gold is a great conductor. No. Nice little cask maledict again. Fnatic maybe a little bit too deep this time. Universe dies. DJ will finally fall. Kinguin add two more to the tally now. 5 to 17. And that should have been a decent chunk of change going into the pockets of the Radiant. Yeah, 500 for the Witch Doctor. 428 for the Omni. But here comes the rest of the cavalry. Abed. He's going to get chased down by Exotic Deer, but Patos now chased down by Envy. The tables, how they have turned. Razor, one, two, slap down. GA not even coming as the PL with no room to manoeuvre. Found, picked off, and Kinguin will lose pretty much their entire team. Look at Zeus being found now by Abed. Slight chains. Oh, no misses. Just misses. Arcane rune on him. He can go in again. That's going to be a team wipe. Katzel's dead. That's four. Can we, can we count past four? Uh, I can. Oh, he misses again. He's not doing too well here, Abed. Nisha still stuck in the trees. There we go. What comes after four? Uh, minus five. That, Everyone. That's <laughs> They're all dead. Yeah, that's a fight uh, without Tide Hunter Ravage. Imagine if he actually uses. It. They don't have the best, uh, the best uh, damage to buildings. Only razors deal some of the damage. They need to actually kill them before uh, they can go for tier three towers. Slowly but surely, though, this net worth lead getting out of control. 15,000. As the Amber and the Razor up at 11, 12,000. 3k saved up over on the Razor. BKB coming from Abed. Another clear indication that they want to try and end this game. As Eternal Envy buys up a Blink. Now he's got Blink Yules. <laughs> he thinks he's a Shadow Fiend, but he really isn't. This opens up the Roche. All tier two towers are down. If they want to play it safe, they should just go, go for Roche. They don't have that the, the best Roche lineup, but uh, still they take him down with with the Gush Tide Hunter. Uh, also has Medallion. So, Kinguin getting out of their base. Here we go. Some observables down. They see Abed and Elisash. Well, he'll be seen by Eternal Envy. How long does this take to kill him? Three seconds. Four seconds. He's dead. He's gone. Which Doctor, 28 Flames on the sidelines, not a big deal. He got two Observer Wards out, that's his, well, one of them gets <laughs> countered, but he has one Observer Ward now on the map. It's a bit of vision for King Gwyn to play with, at least for the meantime. <laughs> well, he just died with no buyback. Yeah, they, they can go. If uh, Envy wants to close this game, he should have gone for uh, Aghanim Scepter so they have more building damage maybe instead. Shut up. I'm just, I'm just kidding, Blink Kills is, is the new thing. 
is under attack. Oh man. Who's, he's just gonna jump in, right? He's just gonna jump in, yeah. link Yules, and wait for Tidehunter to follow to follow him. Radiance Maybe just the shards or something. BKB on Ember. Fully 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 done, fully done. Yep, yeah, of course, fully done. Well, tier three now. Kingwin, 19 seconds until Phantom Lance is back up. The repel is put on to Nisha. As Abed is losing a lot of his HP there, does have to bottle up and maybe get a nice little spirit vessel over on the Abed Ember. There we go. But Fnatic, three lanes are pushing into this Radiant base. So Kingwin really just losing out in the economy battle as the jungle gets farmed up by Fnatic and things looking pretty smooth in this game, but they're still a bit timid about breaking high ground. You know, it's that classic thing. If you break high ground and you start losing out, a lot of gold goes into the pockets of these Kingwin heroes and things start getting a little bit messy. But Fnatic will look to close things out in the next 30 seconds or so as they do snowball in. There's the blink forward link. We'll catch Patos here and bring him down again before he can really get too much done. The Death Ward cancelled oh. by the Ravage. Universe has arrived with the first Ravage of the game, yeah. and that will be for dead. Yeah, I think they're just going to call the game. Or actually not, they want to still fight. Yeah. Let's go in. Catch Envy. Catch someone. Spam them out, keep them off the racks. Phantom Lancer is still farming up towards top. A good four staff back there by the Omni, but Zeus caught with the punch and killed by Pylai. Die. Vayne will take down a That's poor a die back Zeus, from and two that heroes. is a die That's back a on Zeus and Omni as Elder Sash popping all of his items calls GG. Game one goes to Fnatic in his best of three. Yeah. Very, very simply as well. Like that, that is one of the. We, we, we've seen some stomps today. We've seen some two zeros in series, but I think this one, draft wise, play wise, lane wise, was one of the simplest games. Yeah, this was a huge outdraft. No, no vision. No, I mean they have Zeus for let's uh, call it vision, but no synergy between the heroes. No tower damage. Nothing uh, to keep uh, Ember Spirit in place. Uh, I called it. It's a free Ember Spirit game. Thirteen zero. Not, not too much to, to break down into this game. Clear out draft, outplay from Fnatic. They were even clowning with the items. It definitely seemed that way. Well, we'll take a short break, guys. Game number two coming up. Maybe King Gwen can pull something out of that hat and take down Fnatic. But right now, it seems that Fnatic really does have their number. The home crowd team want to make it to that grand final stage. They are still in the upper bracket, of course. So the lower bracket is still wait down there for them, but for now, we'll take a short break. Life was all about following a few simple rules. 